Assalamualaikum Maria. Waalaikumsalam. <laughs> oh my god. I'm so happy to finally meet you. So Not really. Good. It is I've been seeing you on Instagram and I'm like when she gets to Kampala I must get her here. You got me like you, right. Oh, yeah, the reason this is starting because I could not let you go before I start. So I wasn't ready, but I'm like, you know what? She's leaving. So you must do this now. So I'm really happy to have you here, Maria. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. So, as you know, I've been meaning to start a podcast. This is our first edition, by the way. And I know, right? Girl, you're a big deal. We believe it. Yeah. So listen, as you know, my podcast and, you know, what I do, what I stand for in my practice is to normalize conversations that society has deemed taboo, right? And uncomfortable. Yeah. And also to call out or question unhealthy behavior that people have normalized. Yes. Right. Yes. So today we are talking about divorce. Right. Because I know that is one thing that you yes. are so okay yes. to talk about on your, on your channel. Right. Very Unapologetically. Yes. And I remember I was asked once, what are the three things that I would want to normalize talking about? And I remember I mentioned divorce was one of them. Yes. Sex and mental health. Yes. So today we get to talk about it. Welcome, guys. Uh, this is Shari from CC from Let's Fix It Counseling. And I'm a marriage, CBT, and uh, family therapist. And today I have Mariam with me in studio. Mariam, please introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. So, just like Sharifa mentioned, my name is Mariam. I go by Mariam the Ugandan on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And I have been following you for, I think, two years. Oh, yeah. I don't know how I stumbled on your brand, Aww. but it is amazing. Thank you. So I'll give some background about myself. Mm. I'm born and raised in Uganda. Mm. Parents are here, grandparents, everyone is here. Right. But then I left to go to the States when I was like 19. Oh, wow. I went for university okay. and then ended up getting up, making a whole life there. I started working <laughs> along the way. I got yeah. married and oh. I got divorced. Oh, wow. um, and then, talk about it so casually. And then I got divorced. <laughs> oh my God. People would be rolling. I think she got divorced. Yeah, no, but I'm like, oh, she just said, what I'm going to do. I'm going to call her. But you're like, we are talking about this now Girl. because it's like life goes I on. Know. Right? So along the way, I have had and I continue to have an amazing life. Alhamdulillah. 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 So I found Sharif, I think last year, or like around COVID time. Yeah, that is when I joined. Yeah. Around COVID time. And I came across your platform and I was like, oh my God, there's no one who used to talk about these things when I was growing up. I and I wish someone had been talking about these things I when know. I was like going through my divorce. Because yeah. I would have felt so much less like, you know, like a weird person. Like the pressure would have been less. Right. And I've been like, okay, this is normal. Right. Um, so I started following her. And then sometime last year, I've always been quite open about the fact that yeah. I was divorced. Like if you know me, yeah. there are very few things you will not know about me. <laughs> I just... I talk, I talk, I talk, I talk, I talk. <laughs> and if I trust people, I tell them. I know. But last year I was looking at my Instagram and I was like, but what am I using this platform for? Right. Because everyone is like, you know, posting cute photos. Everyone right. is posting travel content. Right. And I've done all that before. Yeah. But I'm like, am I adding any value to the to world, trip. honestly? And I thought about it. I'm like, there are some conversations I enjoy having with my closest friends yeah. and I realized people don't actually talk about these things yeah. so I was like let me start talking about them and it was just first easy stuff like oh okay um let's talk about not rushing through life let's talk about this let's talk about that but then I narrowed it down because I was like what is the one thing I have had in my life yeah. that I am very equipped to talk about right and for me it's heartbreak and divorce I'm like listen you're generous <laughs> I, I am a lieutenant <laughs> colonel in that department so I was like and this happens to so many people so many people go through heartbreaks I am one of those people my yeah. sister <laughs> my sister <laughs> and people go through heartbreak yeah. through divorce some right. will stay in their marriages yes. And they don't talk about them. Uh, they just kind of sweep things under the rug as uh, though it's going to disappear. And I'm like, no, let's talk about this, actually. Mm -hmm. If we want to reduce the, the amount of divorce there is, and now I think in the U.S. it's like 50% of marriages wow. will end in divorce or something. Wow. And it seems to be higher, like in the Western world. Yeah. I'm like, okay, how do we actually stop this from happening? From the beginning, marry right. So True. I share my story. I'm like, these are things I wish I'd known before. Earlier. These are things I wish that I had seen before. Right. Things I wish I hadn't ignored. Yeah. And what I've learned along the way. And I don't really identify as someone who's divorced. It's just something that happened. It was and a lesson. It was a lesson. Really? It was a season of my life, yeah. you know. It happened. And I'm just like, okay, but the women who are going through this now, 
and they need some support, they need some guidance, they need to know that things will be okay. I know. And that's what I usually talk about now on my platform. So. You are <laughs> doing a good job. <laughs> thank you. No, thank you. Because seriously, when I saw you, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> the day she gets to Kampala, we are going to talk about this. No, but I have a Q&A, like I, yes. I, I had shared with you. Yeah. And I would like for us to get into it. And then yes. I want to get your opinion on what you would do. Okay. Okay. All right. So By the way, I love your what would you do Q&As. Oh, You're yeah. stressing me. Every time you post one, I'm like, hey. <laughs> the Q&As are driving you crazy. Uh, because every time you're like, but Sharifa's what would you do? Is it? Yo. But let's get into well, this one. Today it's directed to you now. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. So dear Sharifa, I have been married for three years now and I have failed to conceive. A few months ago, my mother-in-law sent us a maid. And that seemed odd because one, she didn't look like a village girl. And two, we did not need a maid. Okay. It's just my husband and I at home. We've been okay sharing chores, mm-hmm. right? But she told me, the mother-in-law, that it's not okay for her son to do housework. So since I can't do it alone, she has sent us help. My husband didn't listen when I complained. He said he wasn't going to get into an argument with his mother. Okay, no, yeah. it's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm listening. I'm here. Yeah. Fast okay. forward, uh, mm-hmm. Sharifa, the lady told me a few weeks after she settled in that she's carrying my husband's child. Now, I spoke to my sister in law and I found out they've been dating for over a year. He introduced her to a small family group to avoid the rumor getting back to me, right? Now, when I confronted him, he told me he wanted children and he's not about to wait another four or three years for me. So, if I want to stay, I can stay. But if I don't, I am free to leave. Yeah. He used his mother to get the lady into my house. Sharifa, I put money, my personal money, on this house. And now I have to share it with this woman. My mom told me to stay put. The, the wife's girl, mom now, Yeah, is telling her, stay. Exactly. The girl's mom told her to stay put. She said, I am already disgraced by not having children. I cannot add divorce on the list. I am going crazy. I am in the main bedroom. She is in the guest bedroom. I have never been this miserable. How do I move forward? <sighs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Mariam, what would you do? If you were faced with a situation like this, what would you do? And she's watching. So she's watching. Yeah, yeah, she is. Sis, okay, this is my advice to you. Yeah. As your sister. There are some things I want to address in this question. Okay. It's not just the fact that she has now a co-wife. Yeah. Like for all intents and purposes, she has a co-wife, right? right? She in does. the same house. Yes. There are so many red flags in this thing, Sharifa. I know. You know this as a counselor. I know. But me, as someone who is not a therapist, who doesn't have a background in therapy, this is what I would say is a red flag. Number one, your husband lies to you. Because by the time he was courting this woman yeah. and introducing her to the family behind your back, that's lying. Right. That's the first, it's a breakdown of the trust in your relationship. It is. Number two, he's not comfortable standing up for you, for you, with his mom, I with know. his family. Like, goodness, subhanAllah. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. This is a lot. I and know. And then the <clears throat> other thing is, this is not the husband, but like your own mother telling you to stay put. I think and that for me was <sighs> the line. I, I mean, where do you draw the line? You're the mother and I'm coming to you telling you, mom, look, I'm dying. Yes. Right. There is a woman just right next door. And my husband wants, wants us to share us the to house. Share right. The house. Because a I house that I have paid for. Exactly. I've contributed money to it. <gasps> And now look, I'm already going through something because I cannot have children. Yes. And now my own mother is reminding me that look, you already disgraced. You disgraced us. Because Tozala, I think I Like you're already making th- seems uh, things that she has no control yeah. over seem like it's her fault. It's her fault, right? And there's this whole thing in our culture, in African culture, banaga ambachi. What will people say? I know. That thing is killing so many of us. I know, and I think that's where the mother is coming from. Yeah, right. So now, for me, as Mariam, I would advise, and I never advise people to leave their marriages. So mm-hmm. I will only give you advice yeah. from a sisterly standpoint. Yeah. My mother always tells me, and my mother is one of my biggest cheerleaders in this You're life. You're so lucky. Alhamdulillah. I You're am so blessed. Lucky. I am blessed. Oh, yeah, you are. 
Because, I mean, compare your mother to her mother. My mother would like never. Like, you can't even relate. No. And my mother has always told me, whenever you're with a man, yeah. or whenever you're dating a man, yeah. what you accept is what's going to stay. What continues. It's what continues. That's true. This thing of, oh, you know, just pray about it. People change. Oh, my God. Sister, people don't change. No, they, they don't. They don't change. They get comfortable. Mm -hmm. And this man has already shown you that he's willing to go behind your back, to lie, to discount your hardship in this <sighs> entire situation just because he cannot wait any three or four more years or whatever so let me ask be a parent. what happens if mm. this new wife oh okay she has yeah. conceived yes but yeah. what happens if she miscarries and fails to conceive again ask yourself that right is the mother going to bring in a third, a third wife and then a fourth one so you have to ask yourself like man okay. if i accept this in this man it's not going to get better he's just going to treat you even worse worse and let's say inshallah this lady conceives and then you know <clears throat> she gives birth to a healthy baby and everything you're not automatically second place Definitely, but then you're what the, happens? What yeah. happens? You have a child in the house. Yeah. It's not even your child, yeah. and you have to endure that. Yeah, she's only human. She has failed to conceive. <laughs> exactly. So she has to hear this baby crying. There's yeah. nappies and diapers, and you know they're feeding the kid. And then there's also that feeling of like, oh my god, that not resentment, but like I wish it was me. I know. Because she's she only wants human. to be a mom. It's not her fault that she's not. So me, I ask all these things. I'm like, are you really ready to uh, to sacrifice your entire mental well being for this? For this. You know, your mom has lived her life. I think you also need to make your own decisions. Yeah. And also, can we just agree, because there is something I picked up on, can we just agree that cleaning and cooking is a Please. basic life skill? Everyone should be able to do this. And not a gender role. Uh, like, well, why does she make cannot do not do work in Exactly. What are you saying? And you see, I like to use Islam in moments like this. Yes. Because the Let's Prophet Sassam right? so like, the 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 used to help her, uh, uh, yeah. around the house, right? Before he would go and pray and stuff, he was always yeah. home helping his wives out. So yes. what are you teaching your sons, right? Yeah. So the husband can't come home and help me cook. He can't come home and help me, you know, fold clothes and stuff. Let's talk about this because one of the big problems we've seen, Sharifa, is mm. that a lot of our sisters, our Muslim sisters, mm. are locked into these marriages. They are like, divorce, Allah hates divorce. Yes. Allah hates this. So yes. don't get divorced. Stay yes. in the marriage. Have sabr. Sabah. Be patient. Ah, <laughs> this woman comes and she's like, my husband is cheating. Oh, mommy, I end up. I'm getting all these sicknesses. Sabah, Maria. Ah, Sabah, Sabah Jamil. Have yes. beautiful patience. Yes, but then again, I like to remind them mm -hmm. that in the Quran, yes. uh, marriage, yes. the foundation of marriage is peace and yes. tranquility. Right? Why do we forget that? So what are you being patient about, really? Yes. Because the, the things that Allah talked about, how we are supposed to treat one another, yes. do not exist anymore. They don't. Yes. And I know the Hadith says, the Prophet says, mm -hmm. among the things that are lawful, yes. divorce is one of the most hated. Yes. But they did not say it's not it's allowed. Not, it's not. And there's so many ayat in the Quran where Allah even tells us how to get divorced. Divorce right. and separate in peace. And let her keep her mahr. Her dowry, yeah. her bride price, if you are actually one of the truthful. <sighs> and we have to talk about the fact that these men who you're telling us to be patient with, sister, they are not worth being patient for. No, they're not. <laughs> they're not even <laughs> trying. There's no effort. Not There's no all. effort. Look, divorce should never be the first thing no. that you want to do. Yes. There's therapy. You want to like bring in family and yes. stuff. Like you can do all sorts of things. Like there's plan A to Z. But if everything has failed, yeah. right? your emotional well-being, yeah. your mental well-being, your physical well-being is literally in the sewage drain. Like, it's yes. gone. Come on, you have to choose yourself. Sincerely. You and I like to. what you said. You are like, a, a divorced daughter is better than a dead daughter. I 100% yeah. Oh, a mad one. Oh, a mad one. <laughs> People are losing their minds in these marriages. I know. I know. I they know, but for what? For what? I know marriage is beautiful. It's wonderful. And I, I can boldly tell you that I have been divorced. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm in a very beautiful marriage. I am. Uh, we're making, what, 10 years now? It is beautiful. So you cannot tell me yeah. that, okay, yeah, the, the pain for divorce is there, yeah. but the pain for staying in a toxic relationship is there. Exactly. So choose your pain. Like I always tell people, choose your heart. Yes. Divorce is hard. Yes. Staying in an unhealthy relationship is hard. Yes. So choose. Forever so, is too long, Maria. Hey, listen, and life is too short, actually. Right. It really is. So let me ask you, Sharifa, yeah. right? <clears throat> if you think back before you got divorced, yeah. that pain you went through in your marriage, <sighs> and then the pain you went through as a divorcee, which one do you think was worse? Because they're both challenging. It's challenging being in a hard marriage. I know. 
But then it's also challenging being a divorcee. I know, Mary, but I, I've come to learn that the, yeah. the, the, the pain from the, my divorce was just temporary. Exactly. It has passed. Yeah. And here I am. I don't even think about it anymore. Alhamdulillah. How did you manage? For me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like you said, like there's that point, like especially after the marriage where you're going through the emotions, right? Yeah. You're heartbroken and you're wondering if you lost like... You wasted so many years of your life, yep. you wasted your heart, you wasted your time. But for me, I like saying that Wallahi Allah is the one who pulled me out of my marriage. Okay. By force. Like, it was not even by choice. <laughs> he was like, you are going to come out. Come on, buy him, buy him. Come on, buy him. You are coming out. There's no compromise here. Yeah. So, I, and I talked about this like in my Ramadan series, I focused on healing myself. Wow. Because I was like... I want to get married again. It's yeah. always been something. I believe in the beauty of marriage. I, I am there. My friends have gotten married and I'm there celebrating them every day. Inshallah. Every wedding I'm there, like I'm crying tears of the bridesmaid. <laughs> I'm that girl, you know? Yeah. So I always knew I wanted it for myself. Right. But then I also knew I need to take a break and actually heal from this thing that I've gone through because it was really, really, really damaging to me. Yeah. So, so sorry. Alhamdulillah. Like you said, it's yes. been a while. Yeah. But um, so I took time. Mm-hmm. I traveled a lot. Like my, my ex-husband is American. So mm-hmm. we got married when I was in America. Mm-hmm. And then after that, I moved to India for work. I got transferred to oh, India. God. Alhamdulillah. Right. So I was given that space, yeah. which I think people don't talk about. When you end like a relationship, even just a breakup, mm-hmm. not even like a, di- a divorce, mm-hmm. but any kind of breakup, mm-hmm. you need space you do. to actually detach from this person. But we never get the space. We're we always know. following them on social media, talking yeah. about FBI. Yeah. You want You're to like, like, check. What is he doing? Uh, right? call her, is he dating someone new? Uh, <laughs> I'm like, please, <laughs> give yourself space. <laughs> you need it. So you I gave it. myself space and yeah. Allah transplanted me. I was a world away. Sure? I had no contact with this man. Mm-hmm. And I took that time to go like, my, I'm okay. Let's actually deal with what happened. Because yeah. at first I think that I was running on adrenaline, like, okay, I need to do this. And this, and this. I need to move countries. I need to do this, whatever. Mm-hmm. But then I really sat down and I was like, you've been hurt. Yeah. Think about what you've been. I used to journal a lot. Like That writing, works. Like, oh, oh my God. No, my Ugandan people think it would be about Zoom. But, Aya. Yeah, no, see no, but honestly, you guys, and now let me tell you. So you have so many thoughts in your head. Every was of Inji, you're yeah. wondering, oh my God, so I lost my youth. I, I lost know, my, my money, time, my, my investment, time, my whatever. Yeah. So you get those thoughts out of your head. You put them on a paper and they get out of your head. And you can have some space for new thoughts. That's, true. That's how journaling works for me. It works. So I journaled a lot. I traveled all over India. I had all the fun I could have ever wanted to have. Yeah. And then after like a year and a half, I went yeah. back to the States. And I was slowly getting back to the point where I was like, okay, maybe I can start seeing people again, like yeah. dating a bit and seeing what's How out it goes. there. How yeah. Oh, the and streets are tough. Where the streets are tough. <laughs> Weren't you afraid? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, the streets. I think I've been like, man, I've been through worse. Yeah? So let's just go out here. <laughs> no, but let me tell you, I think one of the reasons people don't want to get out of marriages yeah. is because of the fear of the uncertainty. Yes. And they've gotten a bit comfortable. So they keep thinking, ah, the devil yeah. you know. The devil you know. The devil you know. Yeah. You know, and then you get comfortable. Yeah. But you don't know that there are some people just like us yes. who are not being beaten. No. Yeah. We are very okay. We are in really happy marriages. Not perfect, but happy marriages, right? Yes. So if you know this for certain, yeah. that not every marriage is like the one you're in, because you've gotten comfortable, or it's yeah. all you've ever known, or that's what, what modeled to you while growing up. Yes. You need to hear this. With that other group, I know. Yo, with that other group, yeah, those ones who are like, you know, the misery loves company group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, but no, but seriously, I have come to learn this because I have been there. Yes. So when I tell you, yeah. you need to understand that Simala like exactly. I've been there and now I'm in a second marriage. Yeah. And people keep telling you, oh, no one, no one, no one will take you in, no one, no one. Right. And I am in a good marriage. My kids are accepted where I'm like, you do not have to keep telling yourself these things to make yourself feel better or to yeah. settle. You yeah. really don't. You know what you want. You're an adult, yeah. right? At a certain age, you know that, okay, this is not working. No. 
this is not right. Because and this is not enough for me. Exactly. I deserve better. But also, I'm starting to think that you see the stories we keep seeing out there yeah. of mm. <laughs> So I feel like many of us think this is how it is because toxicity has been normalized. Sister, it's not. Right? Sisters, it's not, and brothers, it's not like <laughs> right? It's not. I know it's been normalized. Our yeah. parents are telling us to settle. Yeah. Uh, our singers are telling us to settle. Society is telling us to settle. Yes. But look, if it doesn't work for you, if it doesn't feel good for you, do what mm -hmm. works for you. Do what feels right for you. For Jack we don't even care, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, you live today, and yeah. guess what? Tomorrow we've moved on. Eh? Listen, I was just telling you people, but like, oh, if you're divorced, no man wants you. People, there are people who are living up to take us out to a dance. Like, people who are like, ah, no one wants you. Hey, I know, we're just in them aware we're like, please, we're not interested. Oh, subhanAllah. <laughs> yeah, okay. No, no, I'm, I'm actually really happy to get your perspective because I, when I talk about my perspective alone, it's yeah. just me. Yeah. But now there is you yeah. who's been there yeah. and you know that I'm not making this up. No. You can mm -hmm. actually heal from a bad divorce yes. and you can start over mm -hmm. and be happier. And you will find people who treasure you. You will find men who will walk all over this earth for you. I know. But this how will you know if you don't try? Exactly. And this is the thing what I was saying. People um, people who go like, ah, the devil you know. But if you stick to the devil you know, you're never actually going to find out what's better. Right. You're never going to... You, you, if you believe that there's a relationship that it can be better, believe me, there's someone out there who's willing to give it I to know. you. There I is know. someone. And those same people who are judging you negatively, you know, for <laughs> getting a divorce, <laughs> are probably part of that crew. You know that miserable married crew? Yeah. Yeah. So they want you to, you know, stay, stay with there. us. Stay in our group. But you guys need to learn what... You need to learn to do what's good for you I because know. people are going to talk regardless. Or just but you know what he husband does he beats her he's out in the clubs every day whatever and if you leave they'll still go like oh what about the children whatever your child is doing amazing oh he's fine he's so yeah. happy i can't lie it was hard in the beginning yeah. but we got through it yeah. and th th that actually taught me a lesson that just because society tells you something is bad it doesn't mean it's bad no yeah i mean that was a phase that's what i call it yeah i learned what i had to learn i am a better parent yeah i am a better counselor because yeah. i mean i can relate you when can someone relate. comes in here yes and i don't want people to think that just because we are talking about divorce we yeah. think it's easy no it's not even no. getting up. Getting up is the <laughs> hardest. God knows. <laughs> <laughs> the, the times I went back. Hey. Yeah. So I know it is not easy. There is a lot of issues. There is yeah. trauma born. There is a uh, fear. Of fear. Fear of the unknown. Unknown. There is society. You guys, when I, let me first tell this story. When yeah. I decided to get my divorce. Mm. So, so much happened. Mm. But basically, I was at the point where I'd failed for my US green card. Oh. And I was getting it. Like, because my husband is American. <clears throat> my ex-husband is American. Yeah. And I was getting my green card. Yeah. And I was like, but I'm going to come right this now. I know. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Because oh. I need authorization to stay in the States mm. to work. Yeah. If I leave now, oh my God, will I be oh able to God. work? Am scary. I going to leave? Do I have to go back to Uganda? I don't. Starting over is so hard. Because you're like, I come back, how am I going to find a job? Will I find someone to employ me? And you know, these things of <gasps> I don't know anyone in Uganda. I know. There was that fear. But oh, once scary. I got, I'm telling you, Allah really dragged me out of that marriage for me. Oh. I had no choice. So when I got, but I was scared out of my mind. You know, yeah. do you, you like, we have the thing in Islam, tawakkul, where you just yeah. trust God and you go that for is it. it. That's what I did. I had tawakkul and I'm like, I'm leaving this marriage. It's not good for me. I am not the best that I can be here. Yeah. And he's not the You're best person wife. for me. You're a terrible I'm wife. I'm just the most awful wife, like. <laughs> no, because, no, seriously, when you are in a bad uh, marriage or yeah. with a bad partner, they bring out the worst in you. And then you keep thinking, in Islam, when you get married, that's like yeah. half of your din. Like, is then this you the keep, half? Right? Then you keep asking yourself, but is, is, is this it? Is this it? Because I am a terrible wife. Uh, I'm starting to disrespect this man. I'm starting to resent him. I'm anxious. I'm anxious all the time. I hate I the sex. Peace. I hate everything. Is this how Fam. I get the hump? And you keep thinking, okay. I mean, I think for me, I, I kept thinking, no, this is not going to work. No. I have to go. Yeah. And people need to understand, uh, we, just like as a human being. Yeah. We right? need people. Yeah. We you need people. people. You need God. Yes. SubhanAllah. Every time something gets so hard for you, pray about it. Yes. Like for me, I will have these conversations with Allah and I tell him, Allah, you know, 
if it's not working. Wallahi, if it's not working. Wallahi, if it's not working. And wallahi, if it's meant for me, it will stay. Yeah. And if it's not, something will come up and yeah. I will get out of that situation. Yeah. So people also need to understand that you're only human. Yeah. Right? If something is so hard for you, yeah. go pray about it and then come for therapy. Yes, talk to your friend. Please. Talk to your Yeah, like all these things matter. Let's actually talk about this thing where people go like, <clears throat> okay, um, therapy, if you go for therapy, if you have mental health issues, you have a wiki man. <laughs> This ridiculous stigma about <laughs> therapy. I know. When faith. Whereas oh the Sahaba used to go to Allah to look at Allah for like we send them for, for advice. Guidance, and right? that is therapy. That is what you do. You guide people and you offer them comfort and counsel. That is therapy. I know. And you, what they don't understand is we don't tell for what you do. I won't no, 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 no. You by you. No, 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 no. I will guide you. I'll yes. give you counsel. I'll tell you what staying looks like and I'll tell you what living looks like. Yeah. Pick. Please make a decision. Exactly. But so I don't know what you're saying. Ah, I'm going to be in the middle of my marriage. Child, please, I know. No, no, no. no. Someone asked me that the other day. Like, what about women come to you and ask you about divorce? I'm like, I'll never tell someone to leave. Right. But I will tell you, this is what life could look like, and this is what on both sides. And so please make your choice. And there is that. But what if? You know, we keep yeah. saying. But what if I leave and it doesn't go well? But what if you leave and it goes it's well? Amazing. Like you just have to flip that negative voice in your head and go like, yeah. but what if it goes well? Like for me, that was always my worry. I was a yeah. kid. I have, I had no money. I was broke. Yeah. And I kept thinking, oh my God, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Same life. Right? Right? Same life. Oh my. <laughs> but here we are. Fear is just that. It's just fear. The word fear, it's just that it is in your head. Yeah. But once you get out there. And you know, I think like for both of us, like we realize that once you fail, you kind of get over the fear because you're like, the what has happened right? now, eh? now what? So what next? You're like, I will manage. I will be okay. Come on, buyer, life. buyer. Like, literally. No, I think it's how bad do you want to get out? Yeah. How bad do you... Because people will go like, oh, Tessie, no, no, no. and I'm like, I would rather sell stones. Mm. But Mbayo, mm. I would rather... Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, so how bad do you want to get out of that bad marriage? Yeah. And it's going to get better. I think that's the thing we've both learned. Yeah, like there's, yeah. alhamdulillah, there's so much good and so much higher. Yeah, no. Especially on the other side, if you get over the divorce and you get over that hump, yeah. that tough like year or two years where you're going through it. <sighs> For you, it was two years. It was longer than that. I, <laughs> mine was two years. But then like there's also residual pain, right? I know. So, I think we <laughs> <laughs> So let's talk about this thing which everyone says that all oh, all marriage is hard. You know what? You have to just kind of pick your struggle, be patient, whatever. Trevor, I remember I told you like you put this whole thing of <laughs> the woman, the, the woman who found out about her husband and mm -hmm. their goats. And that was like people, they are hardships. <laughs> and people who are out here sharing their husbands and wives with animals, and you're just yeah. like, this is not the difficulty they're talking about in marriage, please. People, <laughs> when we talk about the challenges you're supposed to be patient about mm. in marriage, we're talking about challenges like infertility. Yes. That is something a woman has no control over. Or a man. Let's exactly, right? Or a man. Yeah. Now, that is a challenge. Yes. Lots of a job. Right? If you're being financial, yes. financially. That is a challenge. Nenga, you're telling me about my husband sleeping with a goat. That Why is should a be challenge. Pray for him. Pray for her. I was like, listen, eh? what are you saying, you guys? This is not part of what marriage is supposed to be about. We need, we need to separate the two. And I think it comes with getting boundaries. If yep. we all, like, if I'm dating now, I'm like, I want to get married. What are my boundaries? Things that I will say no. We keep telling them, write yeah. down your non-negotiables and things you can, you know, tolerate. Guys, I made my list after my divorce. Eh? Right? I made my list and I was like, these ones. Let me tell you. I will say it on air, yeah. right? Because I keep telling it to almost everyone who cares to listen. Yeah. Part of my, um, my non-negotiables is physical abuse. Yeah. Right? Physical oh abuse. Oh my God. Like, I do not care if you just push my head. That's it. That, that is, is it. it. I am out Packing, living. Yeah. And my friends keep asking me, what if you're giving birth more? Girl, I live with my child. I will go. Up. What like, are you saying? So for me, you know, when you have boundaries, you yeah. know exactly what you want. Yes. And then if it happens, you know, okay, no, this 
is not going to work. This is not it. I made this clear from day one. Yeah. We're adults. Yeah. If I've done something wrong, yeah. there is a better way to communicate that. Exactly. Right? As opposed to you coming and slapping me. What has <sighs> that helped? the Can you imagine? Exactly. We're adults. <laughs> and you're like, guys, okay, me, I, I was telling Sharifa this, but like my mom, alhamdulillah, may Allah bless her. I mean, this was one of the things she told us. She's like, you guys, whatever you tolerate in your marriage is your business, right? Yeah. But if a man lays hands on you, you come back home. You oh. have a house, you have room here, so you lucky. will never be shamed for coming back because a man has beaten you. She's like, I didn't bring you into this world for you to die. To suffer. Ah. Subhanallah. Yes. You suffer from things you have no control over. Yes. But something you can actually tell yourself, you know what, you can actually get yourself out of that situation. And I know, again, we know it is hard, you guys. Yes. We have been there. Patricia yes. General, we are telling you. <laughs> we've been there. But wallahi, nobody is coming to save you. No. In every situation that you are faced with, yeah. you are the hero in the story. I can walk that journey with you side by side, but at the end of the day, Mariam, I will hold your hand. If you want to walk, I'm like, let's go together but to and what point? I'm supporting you. Exactly. But I'm not going to push you out. No. And people will think that, oh, my mind no or from Bawale, my you guys failed. <laughs> so now you want everyone else's marriages to fail. Are we dead? Ah. Okay. Do we not have people who love us, please? And I'm telling you, and I'm telling you, yes. You girl, I was that topic. I was that. I was I remember I hid for months. Nobody oh. saw me. Nobody heard of me. And it's still been hard for me to actually talk about it freely. Yeah. Because it is taboo. Oh, no. You're the, you're the wrong one. And it's always that woman. Yeah. No one ever goes to the man. Ah. What are you doing? What are you Yeah. For some reason, black woman or any other woman, you're supposed yeah. to be strong. Uh, apparently, that is a kind of a measure of wife material. <laughs> That is the measure. Sister, me, I failed that one. Not like me, I'm a soft girl for life, please. I don't go big. And Mariam, I will tell you, in my marriage, yes. I am the soft girl. You get it? Like, see, now I'm wife material. And right? you know, now you should treasure me. Girl. We have to audition for his love. No, you do not. <gasps> You do not have to do anything. Like what they're teaching us that, uh, you know, they are telling us to be like glorified slaves. Yeah, That is how I look at it. Yes. Like for you to be white material, uh, you need to care more about the length of the relationship but not the quality. Right? Mm -hmm. 20 years of God for me. Eh? Exactly. Depression eh? is her second name. Are you even sitting in the same room? Of course not. They're not talking, that. but we're going to like six days a week. Yeah. So you do not tell me that that is a marriage it's I would not. want to be in. No. You guys have forgotten what marriage is about. For me, marriage is I am married to my bade. Yeah. I want to go home and tell you what happened. But now right? you You know what I saw? Let's go out and go and have some. That is like, a dream no. for many. Like my parents grew up with that. Like we grew up seeing that. Just they so weren't okay. like lovey, lovey, dovey. Yeah. But, but they were friendships, is, right? Ah, they used to work together. No, but that's what keeps it going. That's it. Yeah, I mean, that's what keeps it going. Me, she's like, get someone who's your friend. She's like, me, your dad was my friend. Alhamdulillah, may Allah rest his soul. My dad oh, died like 12 years oh, ago. May Allah grant you. I was a daddy's girl, you oh. guys. And my mom will tell everyone, like, I may marry my friend. You would find them, like, they'll work together. They work in the same shop. They have like a small what? business together. They'll go home and then they'll sit on their couch like this. And they'll be there talking. You're like, and then they'll have dinner and go to their bedroom. And then you'll go, good night, mommy, good night, daddy. And they're still talking. I'm like, but now, when you guys ever stop talking, now, what are you talking about? What? Let me tell you something from the professional <laughs> point of view. Yeah. You left your ex-husband. Yeah. Because what was modeled for you was not what you got. Exactly. I was like, this is not... This, this is not it. I exactly. Yeah, and this is important for the parents yeah. who are staying for the children. Everything your kids are watching... Yes. Is what is being modeled as a healthy relationship. Yes. So if yes. your kids are watching you getting bitten, yeah. if they don't become abusers, they are I going to get married to abusers. Yeah. For for example, our sister right here. Yeah. That child is going to grow up seeing daddy come to the main bedroom, daddy going to the guest bedroom. That she's like oh, that dynamic yeah. is going to become normal. Yeah. Right? So you can expect that kid to follow your footsteps. Exactly. So you need to be very, very careful what your kids are watching. Exactly. 
because so many times we think I'm doing this for my children. Yeah. But let me tell you, before your children, and I know this sounds selfish every time I say it, I do things for me first. Yes. I am the number one priority because if I am not happy, my kids are going to yeah. suffer. If I am not happy, my marriage is going to suffer. Exactly. So it is me first. Is this making sense to me? Yeah. Does this work for me? Because uh, exactly. So before we do all of this, and Mariam, we're forgetting the in-laws. Subhanallah. Eh, gosh. The in-laws. The, like this mother-in-law, for example. You guys, when you get into marriages, what boundaries do you set yeah. around your in-laws, around your husband, anyone around you in yes. your family? What boundaries are you setting? Because yeah. I, I cannot even imagine my mother-in-law. Oh, she's so sweet. I have to make sure. She's amazing. <laughs> and you guys, good in-laws exist. I right? tell you, I loved my mother-in-law, Sharifa. Like when I was living, when I was getting divorced, I cried for my mother-in-law. I didn't even oh. cry for my husband. <laughs> I relate with that. Let me tell you something, Mariam. I have a side hazo. I make yeah. snacks. Yeah. And you will not believe who my chef is. Mother my mother-in-law. <laughs> so the time I, I mentioned this to someone and I'm like, oh, I need to talk to my chef yeah. and see if she will allow to come for this. And then she was like, who is your chef? I'm like, oh, no, no. I work with my mother-in-law. And I'm like, like oh. we are out here bowing for you, girl. I don't know how you do it. And I'm like, you guys. Again, yeah. just because society has painted a picture yeah. about something doesn't mean it is true. Exactly. Go out there and create your own reality. Me and my mother-in-law, we are bad days. Wait. Like a business is for both of us. Yeah. Send it to the governor. And we are cool. It's been 10, like, you guys, good marriages exist. Good, good men marriage. exist. Good women exist. Yes. Good in-laws exist. Yes. But yes. again, all this can happen after setting boundaries. Yeah. Because I can imagine if I didn't set boundaries, there would be some lines that would have been crossed. And the good thing is also your husband honored them and he respected you enough to go like, you know what, this is my wife. That's this true. is my mother. There yeah. is a very clear, you guys have roles in his life and right. they both have places in his life. That's true. And he doesn't let you, like, he doesn't show you into, you know, oh, I'm leaning one way or another and make it uncomfortable. And I actually you. say, we, my husband has two homes. They and I have learned to work with that but yeah. you know we are always in competition mother-in-laws are competing with their daughter-in-laws daughter-in-laws are competing with their mother-in-laws you guys this mother-in-law right here this is wrong on every level, on every level. and then the man for not standing by your wife subhanallah there is nothing that makes me sick to my stomach to watch a man do that to he, apparently to the love of his life. The love of his life. You are supposed to protect your woman yes. because there's some battles that cannot fight with yeah. my husband's family. And your husband will go in like a wife. Uh, uh, you know, I respect my woman. Yeah. So like know your place. Exactly. So I feel like some battles are not ours to fight. No. Really. Our husbands are supposed to stand with us. We're supposed to fight some battles. It's Same thing with team. us. No. That's the whole Honey, team thing. That is how I describe March. It's a team sport. It's a team event. You're I, facing this thing called life together. You and your you. person. I cannot expect my husband to fight my sisters. No. Why would I let him do that? Exactly. I'm just like, just chill. Just chill. I got this. I also be like, my sister, this is my man. So please. You know? That is so easy. So if you love your woman, I need you to understand the love you have for her is totally different from the love you ever have for your mother. So they will too. never compete. They should never. If you are actually a grown, mature man, you will like know that. this. Mature. And maturity is the problem we have maturity. nowadays. Because you'll have men who are 40 years old. They're going to be able to refuse to grow up. Mariam, but to gamba. Mwasawa said, Java Kulu. Age does not equal emotional maturity. <laughs> so get a 40 year old. You don't want to make you cry. <laughs> 50 year old and you'll be like ah Katia Tere Dumbula he's okay he's sorted this man will make you cry wait no but seriously we are so wrong about many things we're so wrong about yeah and again yeah. everything that we keep talking about is going yeah. to go back to you <laughs> my um, self awareness oh, yes. because when I when I keep I listen to the stories you share yeah. when I hear the things you share it is because you know what you want and you know what you do not want. Yes. And I think that is what makes it easy for you to go through life. Yeah. It doesn't mean it's easy. No, no. no. And there is a difference between wants and needs. Yes. We always mix yes. them too, right? Yes. I have a list of wants I want in a man. I want him to be tall. I want to be dark. I want to be bearded. I want him to be this. I mean, this. He has to be able to make this amount of money. But what do I need? 
I need a man who respects husband. me. Thank you. I need a man who will respect and be a role model to my children. Like there are some things I will not negotiate in. I will not ever even look at a man who has a history of physical violence. Thank you. It's out of the question. There are some Thank things you. that are non-negotiable for me. The rest is like having a cake. The rest are icing, you know? I know. It's all nice. It makes the cake taste good. But like, what's the substance? I because know. this is a man who I'm building a life with, building a legacy with. That's this is true. a man who is going to be walking to Jannah with me, inshallah, you oh, know? Inshallah. So these are things that I need my sisters to know. And I think if you don't know what you want, stuck with what you don't want. That's, That's a good place. Because for me... I knew what I didn't want from my first marriage. I was like, okay, I went through this. I will not be wanting those not things again. very much. No, <laughs> no, no, no. So what's the opposite of these? This is what it is. That makes it easier. Want. It makes it so much easier. Yeah. Because I think it makes it hard for people to go like, okay, what do you want? They're like, I don't know. They're like, what don't you want? Start there. And yes, you guys, it's okay to prioritize financial stability. By the way, it is. Yeah. It's very, very No, no, no. They have made it seem like if a woman prioritizes... Thank you. But why do what? Because I the hadith jelly on Bakasa Salamatic got no leadership. Yeah. Among the things that he mentioned, he has to be fine and the financial, yes. financially at least, maybe not step one, you know, flourishing, mm. but just be making moves. Thank you. A man who is trying. Nay, you and go there yeah. and they tell you about behalf sabur. You guys, nenga temudia guage na noyo zengo e kuchalo no kumo so ogumi dechi exactly. The man is not even putting in effort. But you see, mm. when it comes to the finances, that is where I also want to add the what do you want and what do you need. Those yes. are two different things because when you talk about financial stability, the chicks keep going like, "Well, but Sam Power Range Rover, she's not the one for me." <laughs> but girl, okay, well, do you need a Range Rover do or do you just want a car to like ease your yeah. movements? Because at the end of the day. Orange Rover. Mm-hmm. Right? Sure, yeah, because there's so many other things that are more important yeah. than a Range Rover, well, right? Honestly. Oh, Jamu Funanga, you know, you're number 10. Thank you. Which happens all the time. We see it here. <laughs> this man has a whole list, a group chat in his phone. <laughs> so he's like, he sends what? you the same message. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, beautiful. Oh my God. I'm going to check out what you talk to you. Broadcast. Is it broadcast? <laughs> you broadcast the message? <laughs> no, but seriously, yeah. you need to be very careful about the needs and the wants. Yeah. You want to have a responsible man. A responsible yeah. man. Yeah. He doesn't have to be extremely wealthy because yes. about such a and they're mm-hmm. not providing. Yeah. They're not responsible. They're my yeah. man. Thank no you. Kuh, kumi, you'll have to go and beg him. Banange, sebo, abana, oh, you know, women who are in marriages where the men, they look and they show to the, to the whole world that, oh my God, I'm doing well. Thank you. At home. So that is very important. You want a responsible man. Yeah. He doesn't have to be wealthy because I have seen men who are not wealthy, but they take care of their homes. They take care of their women. Yes. So Banange, you need to be very, very careful. Yeah. Between what do you want and what do you don't want? Yeah. And boundaries. Boundaries are so important. Boundaries what boundaries important. have you set moving forward now? Now that yeah. you've been there, done it, <laughs> General. Yes, madame. <laughs> what, what, like, what are those things you tell this person as you know get to know each other and you're like, yeah. bro. This doesn't work for yeah, me. Yeah, that is so, a line. Actually, for me, one of the biggest boundaries, and I can say this to you, you know this, for me, it's the dean. That's the first know. thing. Like, yeah. you know, you're just like, okay, I'm Muslim. But I'm like, no, for me, it's important that you are man. All you are doing, you're praying, you're fasting, you're doing your best to learn more. None of us are perfect, Sharifa. Thank you. None of us are perfect. Thank but you. you have to be working to improve yourself. Yeah. That's the first thing. And can I say, before you continue, that when someone says, I feel like people are misunderstanding it these days. Yeah. They think, No. Bananga a din in pisa. Exactly. Thank you. And that was the hadith. Din and right? ahlak. Din the religion and ahlak the manners. Those two go together like this. Because so yeah. many of us are wearing our hijabs, our niqabs. Subhanallah, we are terrible <laughs> human beings. mama yelling at his mother, being so stingy and miserly. Go that on. is not. That's not the din that, that women like talk about when no. we say to agalom sajayne din. Together, yes. din mubu tu fubwa yu ombaka sala salama yisa angati abacharabe abacharabe yisanga but like those are things we are learning from, right? Yeah. Like, Me, I have din. I put on my hijab and everything, but you argue your man till paka odi langa again. That kufa morning till evening, you're disrespectful. Gua mugeya, gua banange. Like, no, this we talk about this. No, I know. I was about to say. People would think, did she say omkaza ku omsa jempi? Yes. Yeah. No, because we always think it's always the men who are abusive. You guys, it goes both ways. 
it goes both <laughs> ways and it's just like <laughs> this is not the din subhanallah it thank you not so i wanted to emphasize that yeah. because so many of us are walking around you know you know like we are allah's assistants uh-huh. we're like you know? but if you're even to be your call and you know what i'm saying like you know it's like 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 she does everything you're like it's like but you're out there saying going in dini mimi ndo ina ba kazi ngaba basa muziki wako mani mna ngaba kuita hajj muziki they are like you see wa mlaba huyu ya ina haki zezi but subhanallah haki zone sa tuzai da bidia so wallahi when someone tells that they want a man or a woman with din the ibn qayyim mentioned that a person who surpasses you in morals or in character surpasses you in the din So what that is what is it and because that's basic really that's basic. Like, that's what Please, don't you like that what you could really say so as as so like you supposed to get work or you supposed to be right? so what else are you doing now is we are paying attention to the wrong things nya asala i na gaine chirevo oh my god talk at all at the main pale you paying attention to the wrong things wrong things yeah you said yeah oh my god you guys and pizza that is the most that's the fundamental for me like yeah. I, none of the things you won't learn until you know you spend time with someone know about how does he actually act around people Correct. Correct. how does he act around, if you go to a restaurant how do, me i pay attention how the you waiter. act to waiters oh, that will actually make me judge you i know if you are disrespectful if you don't treat them like human beings right. even not waiters those are people who just clean our roads in the I morning know. give people dignity for not to initiate to what Allah to as human beings trust me we need those people we need them yeah, like we need each other goodness. so that's very very important to yeah. me i cannot be with a man who has no motivation in life girl we are going to sit at home <laughs> and i'll be the one who will be going because i have a good job alhamdulillah allah alhamdulillah. has blessed me and made it easy for me i have a good job i'm providing for myself so say you just went to sit at home eh? Man, you. Let me i don't have to do anything right? <laughs> and i think many women uh now i'll give an example of you yeah. right here yeah. or even myself yeah many of us are t- get this wrong You have a good job alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. You're very motivated, you're yeah. very smart, you're so intelligent. You very so the nice. biggest mistake that we make, yeah. we like to show up with our masculine energy mm. in a relationship, eh? Oh yeah. I got this. I can manage. Unfortunately, many of us hey. in that capacity attract the weak, lazy men. This is, uh, yes, this is true. If you're going to be there and you're going to be all um every woman, oh, you girl. will be every woman. Again, you will be every woman and every man in that <laughs> You'll be the mother, you'll be the father, you'll be the singer, you'll be you'll be everything. But yes. nange, you're allowed to be a Mariam? Yes. But show up with your feminine yeah. energy. Let the man take care of you. Honestly. And for me it won't take anything away from me. I'm like, please come take me out on dates right? and pamper me and tell me how gorgeous I am. Yes. Because Thank I you. Am, and you should be doing all you these things. You should be. And that's not to say, by the way, men, I keep telling men that it is so easy for women to submit and reciprocate. Yes. When you do those things without us asking or having to beg for them because men will go like, aba kazi na kuzina ote baga la kola, ate baga fiamba. They have so money here. What? Na ye, talk about mchala kuisem mas, but how are, are you giving her a reason to reciprocate? Respect exactly you. how and are you showing up to me because exactly. if you come to me mm-hmm. and let's say you're trying to court me and you're trying mm-hmm. to take you know whatever make me your wife and mm-hmm. whatever i will be able to see i'm like is this a man i can submit to i don't know because honestly no woman and i will say this to all you men who are watching no man wants to be out here trying to be everything no it's too we much don't want, it's we want to be soft girls please oh. we don't want to be out here carrying the weight of the family and this and this and this and this no so if you show up and you're like i'm here i'm the man i'm going to take care of you i'm going to provide for you like and, you don't have to do these things and they Then don't i will just give you anything you want stuff to be honest because it's easy it's so easy yeah Oops, so easy. You, <laughs> men, this is the trick. Today is, you have the secret. You want it. your woman to submit, show up in show your masculine energy. Show up as a man. Yeah, as a and provider. As, as exactly, be yeah. responsible. Any smart woman, yeah, will easily 
easily show up the so way I'm you want not going them to so. fight you if you come in here and you are a provider you need to do everything in the house like you know me definitely <laughs> take care of me you're like i have a direction for where we are going how exactly as our relationship what i have Thank for you. my family yeah, i'm yeah. like sir lead the way i am here I'm behind following. you anything you want is yours and, and you see i am one of those women my yeah. who will support my husband yes right i will be there like if he needed yes. me to support him i would do it happily yeah. because you see most women misunderstand this or even the men that okay when you talk about providing now it's uh, things have changed it's 2023 yeah women have their own money yeah. men have their own money uh-huh. and it is okay yeah for a woman to help a man yes now, from what I get from this story is uh, people like this, men like this, mother-in-laws like this, have made it seem like you cannot work with your partner. Exactly. Because Guru Magama, by Allah, Mariam, the advice just is all up growing up. Togatange chintu no musanja. Your money is your money. If it's your to don't ever do anything with the money. And I kept thinking, why would I want to be in a relationship where I have to hide everything? Exactly. Where I cannot grow with my partner. That's exactly what I was going to say, Sharifa. And this goes back to the fact that many of us, the marriages are so between our mothers, yeah. our singers, our grandmothers were very unhealthy. Unhealthy, toxic. They were unhealthy and they yeah. were so insecure. If you're in a secure partnership Wallahi. with like your partner, with your husband, with your fiance, yeah. that ego is gone. I know. You won't go like, ah, you know what? In a center zang. There's vulnerability. There's like, vulnerability. Yeah. There's shared, and you have a shared goal you're working That's towards. True. So if he is stuck somewhere, of course, as his wife, I'm going to step in. I know. I will step back, of course, when he's ready and he's ready to keep going. But there's no harm in me going like, this is for us. And he will not have that ego where he'll go like, no, how dare I? Banaga, but how can my wife support me? Oh my goodness. And that's a problem that we see where like, a lot of times, I've seen it happen a lot of times where if men are not financially secure, yeah. their ego, and it's an African thing, it's a oh, men yeah. thing. It is a men thing. They yeah. don't have they don't have that maturity to kind of like settle their ego down and yeah. go like, this is just a phase. Yeah. We are going to go through this. And her helping me doesn't mean that she disrespects me or sure. sees me as less in any way. Yeah, I feel like strong women do scare weak men. Yeah, we do. Right? Yeah, we, we do. do. <laughs> no, it's true. Because I, I don't think a mature man yeah. would be afraid yeah. of you showing up the way you have. I mean, he'll go like, girl, what do you need? Yeah. How can I help you, go, you know, fly higher? Yes. Right? How can we grow together? Because for me, that is the kind of man I want. Exactly. So don't be threatened by what I have mm-hmm. or who I am, mm-hmm. tap into it. And he'll celebrate, he'll be shouting your praises from the request, man. Girl, there's a couple that came in here yeah. and they wanted to divorce amicably. Okay. That was new. Yeah, in Uganda, that's why I know I'm like, yeah. hey. That was new. They are like, Trevor, we have tried. Yeah. Chigani. But moving forward, yeah. guide us. What can we do? Because I put up a video about uh, how separation can ruin, you know, the kids' future yeah. and stuff, especially if both of us are not mature about it. Yes. So they wanted to, like, ask for advice. And I told them, look, every time, this is my opinion anyway, every time I have a husband and we are married mm. and we say, let's buy this plot of land or let's build this house, if we, if we have children, it ceases to be about us anymore. Yeah, it's about them. Exactly. It's about them. So I told them, start there. Yeah. Do you really want to leave those kids hanging just because you guys have felt to work things out? Yeah. They're like, no, we have enough property. We can yeah. actually share it among us. Uh-huh. Yeah. So we know that this is going to this child. This is going to that child. That mm-hmm. is going to that child. And everyone is going to be there because the woman told him, I can take care of myself. All we have to do is take care of the kids. Yeah. So they are divorced, but they agreed to leave the property in both their names. Yeah. Because their will states that everything goes to the children. And this goes to say people, they are such things as peaceful divorce. Right? They are there. This is exactly what I'm trying to get to. Yeah. Because all these things have meant to, meant to be seem like toko language into no musadja. And guess what, Mariam? Yes. Everything you're working for is for the children. Even if I decide to get out of my marriage tomorrow, yeah. if my husband ever changed and became a toxic human being for me or the God children, forbid, God forbid, yeah, guys, yeah. I will walk out. Yeah. And I promise you, I will not regret what I have done with him. Yeah. Because we have children together yeah. who are going to benefit from the things that we've worked together. That's beautiful. And we are both mature enough to understand that. That if yeah. things ever, you know, got stagnant and we're like, okay, chiganye. We have worked for those children. Yeah. So I want people to understand that, look, divorce is hard, and I'll repeat, but so is staying with an unhealthy, Oof. toxic partner. Yes. Maria? 
I am so happy I got a chance for you to be here. Me too. Actually. And I know you did not. I wanted you to like tell me a little bit of the boundaries you've set because yeah. for me, I always, I, I honestly feel like every relationship for it to either be healthy or unhealthy starts with self awareness. Yeah. Every time you don't know what you want and you don't set those boundaries, you're going to take everything they're just giving you. Yes. If you don't know your value, yeah. I'll come and tell you, uh, you, your value is ten percent, and mm -hmm. you'll take that. Mm -hmm. But if I come in, I'm like, bro, I'm a hundred and one percent. Listen, I will not take anything less. And yes. that's not to say that I'm going to be, you know, arrogant, arrogant and bragging and, and, and stuff. No. People, no, I can still be respectful, yeah. but know that, hey, I will not accept that. Yeah. I will and not I will take say that. this, like, I know we're, we're short on time. We could talk forever, <laughs> honestly. We really could. Time. But if you are a parent, please know that you have a huge impact on how your child sees themselves. Yes. Like for me, my mom keeps telling me, she's like, I will not accept any man who doesn't treat you like a princess. Mashallah. She's like, I will not. Oh, and oh she's stuck by that. And it has sipped into my mentality where I'm not arrogant about it, but I know that I am quite a catch. I if know. you are stepping here, please, you better come correct. I and if know. you will not come correct, keep it moving. There's a line behind you, so please. And that is so true. Wallahi, I, I believe, I believe what you're saying. There are so many things we do not have control over. Yeah. But the one thing that we do have control over is what happens in our lives, especially yes. when it comes to our partners. Please choose well. Choose choose well. Yeah. I'm sure now you can tell that um, and yeah. you notice the daddy known and child, you know, that is a red flag. Why are you giving excuses? Are you when we get married, <laughs> I will change him. He is not a pad. You will not change him. So, yeah, because no, it's true. When, we, <laughs> when we're in love, eh, ah, red flags look a little bit that. pinkish. Oh, they're orange. No, they're rose. Rose, first <laughs> colored. You know that they're cute. I know. And with marriage, bleach will come in and they'll turn into white. That is true. That we is see true. these red flags parading and we just, guys, we went through it. We have come out. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. We're much, much happier. Alhamdulillah. And yeah. if I were my sister? Yeah. I would leave. I would personally. I'm not saying you should, but I would yeah. leave to be honest. Yeah, that is what For would you do? We, yeah, uh, we would leave. I would leave. A hundred and one. There's too much disrespect that has happened in that relationship. There's so much um, in consideration that has happened, and it's I, just, I cannot trust a man like that. No, you can't. But also look at the family where yeah. the guy is coming from. Like she is on her Absolutely. own, and then I understand people go like, "Name Nange, you cannot disrespect your mother." But also, I would like to ask that mother, what kind of mother are you? Yeah. Like you give birth to this kid and you are the one who is shaming them, right? Like a parent is supposed to be a secure best for their yeah. children. Like I'm supposed to know that my mom is my safe space. My she mom, has my back. Exactly. If the world is rocking, I can go to my mom. Always. Your mom lived her life. If that is yeah. what she wanted for herself, good. It doesn't have to be your story. Exactly. Rewrite your story. your story. And that is what we keep forgetting. Every day that you wake up, you yeah. have a chance to rewrite your story you have a chance to tell yourself no 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 this is not how it ends yeah this is not how it has to go on yeah. so with that assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh oh this is to be continued yes right? we can talk for ages so yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah so until Sorry. next time wa alaikum assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh thank you thank you <laughs>